financial accounting. We've been talking about the accounting equation and how it changes from the beginning to the end of the year due to uh, exchanges or transactions involving our resources between various agents. Remember that R resources, E events, and A agents. So if I can think about anything that happens to me in English language and identify the R, the E, and the A, then I can translate it into accounting. Now how we do this and how it's been done since the beginning is we have something called the accounting cycle or the bookkeeping cycle. And that cycle says, first off, we need to recognize the transaction and write it down. That's the Dear Diary, the following things happened to me today. Now, traditionally, we have done that by making journal entries. Journal entries says that instead of having a noun and a verb to make up a sentence or a complete thought, we will have a debit and a credit to make up a complete thought or to express the give-get of the transaction. Second, uh, oh, and also, nowadays, because we have computers, we don't call these journals anymore. Dear Diary, I wrote it in my journal today. Instead, what we have are computer printouts called transaction listings. And transaction listings is just that. It's the chronological listing of the journal entries or the give-gets that have happened to the business by date. And journals are that way if we do it manually or if we do it on the computer, remember transaction listing, the give gets. So we're going to have debits equal credits. And what did I say a debit was like? It's like having a noun and a credit is like having a verb because we have to have a complete thought, a complete give get. Now, once we have this journal or these transactions, that's one nice way to view information or data. But we also would like to view it by groups. In other words, everything that happened to cash, we would like to be able to go to, say, a cash account and look at all the give gets on cash that period. Likewise, supplies. We want to go to one place and look at supplies which means that I'm going to take these journal entries or these transactions and I'm going to, what, slice and dice them a little bit differently. Same data though, but we're going to slice it and dice it into ledgers. And ledgers basically says we have accounts. And those accounts show all the information or all the give gets that have to do with that account. Here in this class we will use something called a T account. And so it might say cash, and we will take all this information from our journals, and we will take all those cash give gets, and we will copy it into the T account or the ledger account for cash. Now, we said debits equal credits. A debit always is on the left side, and I abbreviate debit DR, and credit is on the right side. So we'll take all of those debits to cash, copy them to the left side of the T account. We'll take all those credits to cash and copy them on the right side of the cash account so we can ca kind of see what is our running balance in cash. It's kind of like your checkbook uh, register. It's like this ledger account. So it's everything that happened to cash. Now. Because we're copying data from one source, journals, to another source, ledgers, we have to make sure we copy correctly. So what we do is the third step in the bookkeeping cycle or the accounting cycle, which says we're preparing a trial balance. Now what the trial balance does is it takes the balances, in other words, the net difference between the debits and the credits by account, and it makes a report. And that report has a column for all the debit balances, it has a column for all the credit balances, and it lists the accounts. So, for example, I would list cash, and cash might have a debit balance, so I put it here. I would total up the trial balance, 
to prove that even after copying, my debits still equal my credits. And that's the first three steps of the accounting or bookkeeping cycle.